Here's part two of our chat with Pete Agnew of Nazareth. He's the last remaining member in the band. We lost Daryl Sweet a few years ago. Manny Charlton's gone. And so is Dan McCafferty, their longtime lead singer. Remember, if you want to see the entire interview, it's all on our sister site, Rock History Book. The links will be in the description as well as a link to the podcast of this entire interview as well. When it comes to albums, I discover Nazareth with Razman as their third album. It was 1973, and it was a year where they released two albums. Loud and Proud came shortly after. Rampant was in 1974, then Hair of the Dog in 75. But I stayed with this band for a long time, and I love their new album. I was really surprised. It doesn't sound like the old Nazareth. This is a whole new machine, but Pete Agnew is still there. And we asked him about his favorite Nazareth albums. Melody, she's from Saskatchewan. She says, what's your favorite of all the Nazareth? If you can't count the, because everyone says their new album is good. So don't you dare, buddy, even no, though no. I love your new album. What, what, what is, when you look back, what's, uh, you, what are some of the favorites of yours? Now, you see, this is the real thing. You know, and I'll never been says that, you know, what, you know, what, What's your, what's your funniest story? What's your, what's, your fav- what's your favorite country? I mean, who's going to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> what's your unless favorite you, dream? Uh, Pete, what's your favorite? You if you were a tree, what tree would you be? <laughs> uh, uh, unless you've got some serious death wish, you're not going to tell what's the favorite country, you know. Uh, uh, you know, you know Hello, I love, playing in, you know, I love playing in Canada. You go down to Detroit and get shot, you know. So, no, what's happening is uh, with the same way, same albums, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I, I don't have favorite albums. I have, I have tracks on each album that I like. You know that kind of thing. You know, and and you know what happens is sometimes the, the closest I can say to Melanie is now and again somebody will mention a track and I think, oh, I've never heard that song for a while, and I'll I'll, I'll dig it out. You know, and I play like uh, I'll play the track, and then I, t- I, I listen to the next track on that album, and I think, yeah, this is good. This, and then I start to play, and I think, well, this is a good album. So I start to play it and I think, oh, I like, I'm, I'm enjoying this. So that becomes my favourite album for a week, you know, and then and then maybe some other time there's another track. Now, oh, I'll check that one. It was, and it was funny, actually, last, just a couple of days ago there, it was somebody was mentioned something from, what was it? It was a, it was, it was a Move Me. We did a song called Move Me and it was on the Move Me album. And I thought, I'm going to have a listen to that again. And I listened. So I ended up playing, I was sitting with the headphones on and I ended up playing the whole album. And I thought, yeah, this is a great album. Let's play it all again, you know. So that was my favorite <laughs> album. Last, two days ago, Move Me was my favorite album, you know. So I don't really, I, you know, I don't really have one. But um, I mean, I, I don't, obviously, I don't, I, I don't love everything we've done. And nobody does. There's yeah. nobody in any band says, oh, I've loved every track I've played. That's rubbish. You know, you don't. You know, there's, there's times you go like, oh, well, the rest of them want to play it. You know, uh, you do your best, you know, and try and, try and get it as good as you can, you know. But I mean, there's there's not. But then again, there's nothing I've really hated play. You know what I mean? Because we just wouldn't do that to each other. You know, you wouldn't make somebody play something and say, "Look, I think this song sucks." You know, well, well, we're not going to do it then. You know. So I've always kind of liked everything we've done. You know, waiting for the world to end. Of course, you referenced a pandemic on there, and you know that's a good thing about this because let's not avoid the fact that we've all gone through this. There's something cathartic about listening to one of my favorite artists, which you are. And I'm listening. We're going, he's living the same life on some level. He's got the same angst about this that I do. Absolutely. <laughs> That's just, uh, you know, yeah. well, what can I say? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you say your, your lead singer's name is his sentence? Sentence, yeah, just like, as in sentence, but only okay. with an A instead of an E sentence, yeah. Now, like when you got him, sentence. when you got him, you obviously didn't want a Danny, uh, 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 and, and I think it's a good move. You didn't want someone that sounded like Danny. I mean, why would you want that? Because this is a uh, singer. You don't want an imitator. Absolutely. See, the, the, one of the things that we said right away, if we, were going to, if we were going to continue, which we, you know, we said, well, this is what we do. You know, this is what we're going to continue, you know. And with Dan's blessing, by the way, because he knew, you know, we should be still playing. And what the, the first thing was that we don't want a son, a Dan sound alike, you know. We, we 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 can't do that because the fans would hate it, and they, and it wouldn't be fair on the guy that was singing as well. You know, you, you're too many comparisons, you know. So we thought what we need is somebody that can do our that's going to take our material, but you know, do it and. And in, in, in an original way, if you like, you know, and their way, you know, and 
when I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll tell you, John, I got a lot of. I keep saying I get tapes. You don't get tapes from people. You audition tapes, you get files of you like sent, you know. And I'm in, I'm getting a lot of them. I mean, there was a lot of them were Dan Soundalikes. And I've got to say, there were a lot of them very, very good. I mean, you know, they weren't they, they, you know, they were, the guys were good, they were cool, you know. But I'm just going, no, this is wrong. You know, this is not what we're looking for. And it was a mate of mine, it was actually a drummer, a friend of mine, um, who said, You should I said, I know what you're talking about. And there's another Scottish guy, funny enough, and he said, have you seen this guy? Take a look at this Carol Sentence guy. And I said, who's he? I've never heard of him, you know? And he said, no, well, take a look, you know? And uh, so I got into YouTube. That YouTube comes in handy sometimes. And um, and I had a look, and he, he was, uh, and I saw him with Don Airy. You know, he was out uh, with Don. From, that's a pally, hasn't he? Tours with him. And I saw him in that. And then I saw him on one of these, uh, you know, rock, classic rock shows where they had a couple of singers and they do all the big, big, you know, Queens, every huge songs, everything from Sweet Home Alabama to, you know. And this guy was on this thing. He was one of the main singers on that. And I saw him in there singing all this different material from, you know, all these huge hits. But he was singing it like him. He wasn't trying to sound like, he did a thing with the Who. He didn't try to sound like Roger Daltrey. He didn't try to sound like Freddie Mercury, you know. And I thought, here, or, or Ian Gillen, you know, I thought this could be the guy we're looking for. You know, this is this is what, this is what we need. So, we get, we, you know, got in touch and said, do you want to, do? I said, I'd love to, I'd love to have a go. So we got him to come up to Scotland, give him like four songs, learn them, you know, so let's see what you sound like. And he came up and we started playing the first, and halfway through the first song, we all just sort of went, yeah, yeah, that's it, fine, pal, you're in, you know, <laughs> you're the guy, you're the man, you know, and and it's been great. And and what was good was, what is good about it that is a, uh, he, he, he sings, he, he, he does the Nazareth stuff very well in his own way, but he does it very well. All the all the old stuff, that you know, the, the classic Nazareth stuff, he does a good, a very good job of that. And the good thing was, is the fans accepted them very quickly. That was one of the big things, you know, we thought, mm, this is a big test because, you know, it's not just any singer that you're, you're, you're replacing him, it's Dan McAverty. I mean, he's a one-off, you know, there's the, 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 an iconic voice, you know. So, you know, we expected him to get a bit of a plaster from the, from the fans, and he expected it. But we were very pleasantly surprised and that, uh, that people took to him. And he's very, very good on stage. He's got a great stage presence and things. So the whole thing just went really well. And the fact that the guy writes songs. He's a songwriter as well. So that was handy. So what you're seeing now is, uh, you know, what would have tattooed on my brain in this one, is seen all the... the, the the sort of, as you say, it sounds like a new band. Well, it is like the new band, really, doing the new stuff, you know. And um, and I think I think because the the of that you get that freshness, you know, like how you approached your first and early albums, you still got that kind of energy. You're not saying, "Well, this is the twenty fifth album." Oh dear, yawn, yawn. You know, <laughs> you're going. Well, it didn't feel like the twenty fifth album when I went in to make it. You know, it, it, it felt um, well. It was really like the second album of this band. You know, and it was weird because, you know, when people make, somebody makes a really good album in the early days and they think, oh, God, can you follow that? You know, yeah. this is this is the bummer now. The next thing is, oh, God, can we follow this thing? You know, especially when you get a big hit with it. Well, the thing is, we, when we did, uh, when we did Tattoos on My Brain, we thought, this is a very good album, this, you know, and everybody was raving about it. We thought, hmm. You know, we could be up shit creek here, you know, because we've got another one to do now, you know. I wonder if we can follow the one we've just done. And I think we did. I think, you know, I, I, I like phrasing. I, I like artists. You know, like I like Sam Cooke because of his phrasing. But, you know, the, the Carl does this thing on Better Leave It Out. There's this, like, phrasing where he, I'm going, how did he put all those words in there? And it seems to really work and it bounces, which good phrasing should do. And, you know, I'm going like, oh, my God, this guy. You're like, he's got this power. But, but to be a rock singer and to phrase at that level with a song like that, I just go, I... I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good song that one. That was one of Jimmy's songs, yeah. And that's and, and that's uh, and it's quite a it's, it's quite a tricky thing to sing and get weight into it as well. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, it was good. I mean, actually, Carl Carl was, uh, was uh, you know we stretch him, you know, because everybody writes differently. You know, you can tell the songs that Carl writes. You know, when he's uh, the, he he's on very much a straightforward rocker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he likes his heavy metal, you know, and, and, and so 
But Jimmy writes and Lee write differently, you know. And Jimmy's got like a lot of little tricky kind of things he does, these songs, you know. And the, 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 the you know, you, you need to think about it, you know, when you're singing them, you know, you need to work at it. And Carol does it wonderfully, you know. He, he, uh, he's, he's, he's made a great job of every, every song on the album, actually. It's very good. Remember, if you want to check out the whole interview, it's on our sister site, Rock History Book. And there's links to that and the podcast of this interview as well in the description of this video. We'll have a next clip from Pete Agnew in two, three days. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. Also like our videos. It makes them perform a lot better. If you want to donate to the channel, you can. There's a PayPal link right in the description. But you can also buy a t-shirt. That helps us too. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.